just a, um, a sample passport uh, by BSI, the Bundes Information something something, um, the German uh, sort of standardization and security office. Um, uh, and this is actually it has features like fingerprints. Um, since I have it on file here, I don't have to uh, prove uh, that I can read uh, those, uh, those files. They're just stored on, on my disk. Um, and also iris, which is also part of the standard, and definitely no one is using that at this point. So um, let's see some more uh, information about uh, certificates. Um, uh, this is actually uh, uh, um, based on elliptic curve cryptography. Uh, the Dutch uh, use uh, RSA um, to, for, for their certificates. Actually, um, as you can see, this, this one is, uh, I, I can't fully check this one because I don't have the root key. Uh, if you remember the previous um, uh, image from my, my real passport, there, uh, there was a check mark there also for, the, for this um, indicator here. And that meant that I actually validated, my, 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 the, the, the software was able to validate the chain all the way up to the Dutch root certificate. Um, what else to show here? Except for the picture. Uh, this is not as big as the, as the picture of the Dutch passport. Um, this is, uh, and it also doesn't have feature ports, just like the, the previous one. Okay. Any more questions? The RS option is uh, used by no one at this moment. No, it's part of the specification. Um, but the fingerprints. I mean, the same security mechanisms apply here to the IRIS, of course. Um, but no, no one is, um, is enrolling users for IRIS, as far as I know. So you, uh, so the Java card takes what are standard Java class files and then translates those to, compiles those down to the, to the card. How many different platforms of card are there that you have to compile to? I'd like to say only one, but that's... No, so, so for Java card, there's a virtual machine running on the card. Okay. So you only transfer the class files packed in a special format so that it's you know, safe on the communication time. And there's the, still the, bytecode. The things that you okay. don't need, and you, but you just send the bytecode, and then the virtual machine runs the bytecode. Okay. The virtual so machine itself, yes, the, as many producers there are, the, that many virtual machines on the card. All right. But the application should be more or less... Uh, Okay, Sorry. I didn't understand that, that okay, right. the cards came with a JVM already, uh, well, a, a VM of sorts. But I have to say that there are a couple of different versions of Java card. But you don't need to know that so much. Uh, well, oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> but but that's, it's, I mean, it's okay. There are only that many Java card developers in the world, and it's, it's, it's sort of manageable, all these different versions. And they're good tools if you can get a hold of them. NXP makes a really nice tool set for Eclipse, um, but it's not open, uh, so, so it's a real bummer. Yeah. yeah, I saw you had a whole bunch of uh, well, different passports and stuff in the folder. Yeah. So all these people gave explicit permission for you to scan their passports? No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, uh, this wasn't on video, right? Um, no, it's, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's on. Right. Okay. Um, so, so sometimes, as an open source project, uh, we get we get some requests for clarification. Of how do you do this? I'm stuck at this point. Um, sometimes also from people doing pilots at international airports in the Middle East, etc. And sometimes I say, okay, um, I give you some free consultancy. Uh, what, what do you give me in return? And, uh, <laughs> uh, for example, samples uh, would be good. And I was thinking, you know, samples like this one, uh, like. Uh, Artificial samples, but they sent me uh, uh, a zip file with some, uh, some nice looking passports. As far as I can tell, they're from real people, <laughs> probably participating in the project. Uh, okay. um, let me present uh, some more stuff. How am I doing on time? Uh, we have had 15 minutes, but I mean, uh, it can be 10 minutes or something. The, the, the video will stop in 12 minutes. Okay, good. I'll, I'll try and get to the um, so, so, 
So this is an open source project. We started in 2006 as a research project. Um, and the Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs in the Netherlands, they funded this project and they actually asked, asked this university, the Radboud University in to look at the security of the passport as it was being introduced uh, in 2006. Um, we were able to open source the results of that research project and that was sort of the first version. Right? Then in 2009, I already left uh, Nijmegen at that point, um, the project uh, hadn't. They did uh, another project for the same um, ministry uh, looking at the uh, security mechanism that protects the fingerprints, extended access control. And there were some other projects uh, at the University of Nijmegen, one in which uh, we also participated for the Dutch Motor Vehicle Registration Agency, RDW, um, where we looked at sort of the driver's license applet uh, that uh, Wojciech forked off the uh, machine readable travel document applet, and also at the card side, the, the terminal side software for that. Um, at Novae we had an Analnet, I do not do you know Analnet? Yes. Open source uh, people. They funded a project to look at whether we could use a passport using things like this for remote access. Uh, I mean, you know, remote authentication, I have to say. So can you log into a website with your username and password and the passport showing that the yeah, appears that belong to your username and password are real? Can you, can you remotely show that you own a passport? So we, we, we looked at some identity management um, standards uh, like um, OpenID, uh, if you know OpenID, and uh, card space, and in combination with uh, smart card technology. Um, last year, two years, you know, last year, we did a, a project for Scantech IT, which is a Danish um, a company, um, which supplies at least some of the Danish um, uh, city halls with um, self-enrollment um, terminals. So you go there, if you request the passport, you go there, they take your picture automatically, your written signature, uh, and also um, uh, your fingerprints. And they integrate this into a nice machine. And they needed to, to have some of the encoding uh, uh, standard specific stuff that, that we have in the project. Um, and we, we actually did some, some other um, uh, programming for them and they translated it all of this to C-sharp and to integrate it into their enrollment machines. So these are paid for projects. Um, this, this, I, I call it you know, open source coding in the boss's time because actually someone's paying me to, to, to work on my hobby project, uh, which I think is a, a really nice model. Uh, there's also a lot of effort not being paid for it, uh, of course. Um, we have some developers doing uh, Adding features, of course. I mean, just like a regular open source project. But I mean, it's it's so much nicer if uh, if you can get the resources uh, that somebody uh, is actually paying. It. Were they purposely open source or accidentally? Uh, because it's uh, well, uh, I don't remember exactly. So for some reason, RDW insisted on this on yeah. software being open source. So. Yeah. Yeah. And Why? Uh, it's yeah. The nice thing is that once you have a project like this um, with the license uh, that it has, then either so, so the Danish party probably would rather have seen a closed source solution. And yeah, it's, it, they it's, they it's, asked a couple of companies, you know, can you program this for, for us? They came out that asking me to do some work for them was cheaper. Yeah, because I already had all of this code base. So it's, it's the same with the Linux kernel. It's simply uh, cheaper to uh, yeah. do with GPL. I think it's also different from Linux and OpenOffice, etc. I mean, this is such a niche product, right? I mean, how, I was just talking about the, the number of Java card developers in the world. Um, it's hard to get developers interested in all of the low-level crypto and uh, smart card communication stuff because it's um, it's not your regular. It's not as not as many people are interested in smart card technology, specifically e-passports. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very small. It's also, of interest. it's also pain in the neck. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if, if you want to get all of the details, uh, it's, um, I mean, a, a, a rough first version is easy. Then you can see the picture. I mean, first time we, we wrote all of, all of this stuff, we were just downloading the binary blocks from the passport. We just looked at the 
offset where a JPEG editor was uh, located. Let me show the picture. Um, but once you get involved in this, you want to do it right, right? So you want to parse the structure of these tag length value items, this ASM1 encoding. You want to do you want to do it nicely, and that um, uh, that's the, that's where ninety percent of the work is uh, to finish it and uh, also to add new features. Anyway, here's my conclusions. Smart cards are very small computers with a special purpose. Secure, I mean, they're secure cores. They just have to do the cryptography, um, and they have to protect themselves, and that's where what they do. Um, E-passports are, in my opinion, at least, primarily useful for document authenticity, just as, a, as another authenticity mark, just like the watermark, just like the, the kilogram. Um, and we'll have to see about you know, how useful biometrics are, maybe in the future, you know, automatic border control, etc. I think an academic project where you have some people in all freedom working on uh, uh, spending lots and lots of resources on getting those final details uh, ready is a good starting point for an open source project. Um, like I just said, smart cards, Java cards, e passports, it's just a small in crowd really interested in this. So having enough developers, testers, and users can be a problem. It's not Linux, it's not open office. But still, we see some adop adop adoption. Adaptation. Um, and I think what will help is, uh, I can give a small demo uh, uh, offline if you want, that is NFC. Um, reported, since this is Java, we ported all of this to Android, of course. Um, there's a growing number of handsets that support this kind of functionality. I have two here. I have a, a Nexus 7 tablet here and a Nexus S, which is the old um, developer phone from Google. They both have a, a smart card, completely smart card reader embedded. So more and more people being able to read their own passport using their smartphone will perhaps help um, make this um, something of a, um, a project that uh, is even more useful. Okay, that's it. Any more questions, remarks? Yeah, uh, two questions, but maybe the answer will get uh, too long. But about uh, is is this security by obscurity or by uh, yeah, the other thing? Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, is it actually possible to do uh, the right thing? So not security by obscurity, but I don't know the word. Yeah. Uh, I, because if I understand it all right, it's all about making it difficult to watch in the chip. But yeah. is there some is there some way possible to have an open chip, which still functions right? To say it like that. Right. I understand your question. Okay. Your second question is about uh, is there are there uh, initiatives to open up the processors and such, yeah. uh, in licensing terms. Uh. Um, so the first question, um, yes, in a way it is security by obscurity. I mean the cryptographic algorithms are open and tested and reviewed by photographers, so you, you should not use Micro Classic uh, and, and, and proprietary algorithms, of course. But the implementation, basically a smart card is just a really small computer, and there's data going over the bus, there's, um, as soon as you start processing information, you're leaking information. I mean, the difference between a zero and a one can be detected if you have, if you can, eavesdrop in enough detail um, and actually some of the early smart cars were vulnerable to differential power analysis if that rings a bell here where basically you load lots and lots of um, input into a smart card you observe the power usage I mean we're supplying power to the, to the smart card so you can measure uh, how much power is being used at any point in time so you get a profile if you take the average of all of those profiles and you that for you put the different power profiles in different classes where you expect certain bits to do certain things if you know the algorithm and you should know the algorithm because we don't trust security by obscurity at the crypto level then you will see peaks and those peaks means mean that you that you found um, uh, a point where your prediction about a certain bit somewhere within the uh, cryptographic algorithm was right so you can you can start to 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 get 
cryptographic keys from a smart card by just listening and seeing how much power it uses over time for a very large number of input samples. Now this is, you need to be able to take many, many samples, so you need to, uh, and you need equipment for this, but uh, um, uh, smart card manufacturers see this as a, as a